Okay, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to Solex web webinar. Today's topic is about microgrid solution. So I believe some of you may already know this solution before. Uh, if not, don't worry. Today is a good chance to learn more about it. As usual, please note there is a questionnaire uh, in the message bar. You can fill it and uh, feedback to us we will randomly pick two winners for $50 Amazon card each. Don't miss out. Okay, uh, now let's start. So here are all the contents for today's webinar. Firstly, we will give an overview about this solution, uh, then introduce the main connection for this system. Thirdly, you will learn how to set this system. Lastly, there are some tips for the installation. So now let's go over all the parts one by one. Okay, here is the first part, solution overview. So firstly, let's have a look at the background of microgrid system. Because on-grid inverters are developed earlier, uh, there are many on-grid inverters still in use in some of the markets. And due to islanding effect, on-grid inverters are not able to work uh, when the grid is off. And this will cause power waste because energy generated during this period cannot be used for the system. So for some areas with frequent uh, power failure, this is a headache. So microgrid system is a solution for this kind of situation. By introducing a hybrid inverter in this system, the hybrid inverter will simulate the grid and give power to it when the grid is off. To be more specific, the on-grid inverter is connected to the EPS port of the hybrid inverter and the hybrid inverter uses PV or battery energy to power the on-grid inverter when there is a power failure. So the whole system can still work during off-grid time period. Here is a system structure of a very simple microgrid system. Uh, there are two inverters in the system. Uh, on the left-hand side, it is a hybrid inverter, and uh, on the right-hand side, it is an uh, on-grid inverter. The on-grid inverter could be any uh, third-party inverters. The on-grid inverter is connected to the uh, EPS port of the hybrid inverter and uh, it serves as an EPS load to the hybrid inverter. And uh, two CTs, as, as you can see, is included in the system and uh, CT1 is connected to the grid side and uh, uh, it mainly used to monitor the total yield and consumption on the grid side. And uh, CT2 is connected to the on-grid inverter side and mainly used for calculating the yield on the on-grid inverter side. And uh, the other part, the other parts are connected as usual. Uh, for microgrid system, there are many advantages for it. Firstly, cost effective uh, as a wasted on-grid invert PV energy can, can be saved, which will lead to a lower electricity bill. It is also eco-friendly. There is no extra device needed. And this system, 
system is easy and convenient to configure, just enable and the function and then forget. So now we will introduce how the system actually works. When the grid is on, in normal working status, when PV is sufficient, hybrid and the on-grid inverters power the loads together. If there is surplus energy on the on-grid inverter, it will also charge the battery connected to the hybrid inverter. For example, on-grid inverter generates three kilowatts. EPS loads currently is two kilowatts. Then one kilowatt power will be used to charge the battery through the hybrid inverter. If the battery is full, then the one kilowatt power will be exported to the grid side. When PV is insufficient, hybrid and on-grid inverter will power the EPS loads together. For another example, on-grid inverter generates two kilowatts, and now EPS load consumption is three kilowatts. So the extra one kilowatt will be taken from the hybrid inverter. Now comes the situation that the grid is off. In this case, we lost the grid, then the hybrid inverter will simulate the grid and uh, it can still power the angry inverter to make it work. In this case, hybrid and the uh, angry inverter will power the EPS loads together. And uh, if there is surplus energy, the power will be used to charge the battery. AC coupling, also known as capacity coupling. For the microgrid system to work, the angry inverter should support AC coupling. So AC coupling is an electronic engineering method that allows an AC signal to pass through the circuit. At the same time, it prevents any DC signal from getting through. Uh, to connect a third-party angry inverter to the EPS port of the hybrid inverter, uh, it is actually AC coupled to the EPS port. And that's why we will need to, we will need the angry inverter to support this feature. Here is a compatible list of Solax inverters that can support microgrid. Uh, basically, we can see only X1 Hybrid G4 S1 Fit G4 can support microgrid system. And Fit G4 can only be used in pure off grid situation. So it cannot be used, uh, Fit G4 cannot be used in the pure off grid situation. Also, for the on grid inverter, it should support frequency increase response. This applies when the angry inverter generates too much power and uh, at the same time, the hybrid inverter cannot hold this kind of power. The angry inverter should be shut down to ensure the safety of the system. So when the angry inverter is producing too much power, the hybrid inverter will increase the EPS port frequency. Then the angry inverter will detect the abnormal increasing frequency and react, which is uh, shutting itself down. Also for the angry inverter, 
there are some power restrictions for it. Uh, the angry inverter max output power should be less than the max um, the maximum hybrid inverter EPS output power, as well as less than my maximum battery charging power. Also, here is a table about angry inverter maximum power regarding uh, different battery models and quantity. For T58, when connecting four batteries, microgrid solution cannot be used. Uh, for T30 batteries, the X1 hybrid inverter can connect maximum four batteries, as you can see, and the uh, angry inverter maximum can be uh, 7.5 kilowatts in uh, three and four batteries situation. Okay, uh, the second part is about cable connection. For PV connection, grid connection, battery connection, etc., of hybrid inverter are just as normal. So these parts will not be introduced more. For cable connection, we will pay more attention about EPS and uh, CT connection these two parts. And uh, in the table, there are some cable and uh, breaker requirements for EPS connection, which you can refer to. Okay, now let's start the EPS connection for hybrid inverter. So we prepare a grid cable, three cores, and an EPS cable, which is two cores. This is, um, so the reason that we put the grid cable and EPS cable together, it is because that the grid port and the EPS port uh, use the same outside waterproof cover And uh, then we find the EU, the European terminals, the waterproof shield in the accessory package, as the picture shows about all the parts. Then put the grid and uh, EPS cable through the waterproof cover to the corresponding part ports, respectively. Step three, we remove the insulation cover of the electric, electrical wires, roughly 12 millimeters on each wire. Then put the European terminals to these cable ends respectively. Please make sure uh, the terminals and the cable cores are firmly attached. And uh, finally, use the crimping, crimping, crimping tool to uh, press them tightly. When the connection ends are completed, the next step is to find the location of the AC port on the inverter. It is normally on the right bottom side of the inverter. Then in the insert the crimped terminals into the wiring ports. They are uh, life, neutral, and PE, respectively, for a grid connection. It is life and neutral for EPS connection. Then we use a flat blade screwdriver to tighten the screws on, on top of the wires. Once the cables are tightened to the inverter, 
put the waterproof cover to the inverter and uh, use an Allen wrench to fasten the screws on the four corners of the waterproof cover. Lastly, spin in the plug on those two wires to tighten the cables. This is to finish the hybrid inverter EPS port connection. For the on-grid inverter, as introduced before, it is connected to the EPS port of the hybrid inverter. So we prepare an electrical cable, strip the ins insulation covers of the wires to the length according to uh, the on-grid inverter manual. This may be slightly different for different inverter brands. So here is just an example. Then remove the AC plug from the on-grid inverter, insert the stripped end of each three wires into the appropriate holes on the on-grid inverter, then connect the AC plug back to the inverter. Finally, as the picture shows, on the other end of the cable, stripped the cover to a certain length. In the distribution box, find the end bar for the EPS load. Connect the cables from the, the angry inverter to the breaker so the angry inverter AC connection is finished. The correct location and uh, connection of the measuring system is a key element of the microgrid system. As the system has two CTs, so the location of the CTs would be paid more attention to. CT must be installed to the correct position so as the system can work normally. As microgrid normally is not a high power system, so basically 100 amps CT would be enough for use. And uh, as there are two CTs, so a RJ45 splitter is required so that uh, both of the two CTs can be connected to the same meter CT port on the inverter, as the picture shows. Uh, the meter CT port pin definition is showed on the right hand side. Pin 1 and 8 as marked uh, in red are for CT1. 3 and 6 are for CT2 as marked with blue. CT has a direction. It is also important to clamp the CT to the right direction as the red arrow shows. So CT1 should be pointing to the grid while CT2 should be pointing to the hybrid inverter. By default, the CT cable length is around 40 to 50 centimeters. And uh, it can be extended to 10 meters maximum. If you will have any problems with communication, uh, please always first check if RJ45 is crimped correctly and uh, the continu continuity of wires is assured. And please remember about communication wire length do not exceed the maximum of the CT, which is 10 meters.
And now we come to the third part, system setting. In this section, we will introduce the main settings for microgrid system. They are microgrid setting and CT setting. Other settings will not be introduced here. Also, please note, uh, as microgrid system cannot limit the export power, as our hybrid inverter has no communication with the on-grid inverter, so the on-grid inverter output cannot be controlled. As a result, it is not possible to do zero export control for a microgrid system. Okay, the first part is for microgrid setting. It is very simple. Just start the hybrid inverter, configure the Wi-Fi network for it. After that, add the inverter to that account. Then on the inverter setup page, go to main menu, use advanced password 2014 to enter advanced settings. Scroll down and uh, you will find microgrid enable function. In this function menu, choose enable to let the inverter work in microgrid status. Then save the selection. The second part is about CT setting. It is in the same advanced setting menu, just below microgrid enable function. You will find uh, meter slash CT settings. For mode selection, if CTs are used as measuring devices, then select CT here. Otherwise, please let meter and then save. As CT does not have an address, so there is no need to set addresses when selecting CT. If it is found that the CT is clamped in the wrong direction, for example, CT1 should be pointing to the grid. However, somehow it is installed pointing to the inverter and uh, it is no need uh, it is uh, no need to go back to the installation site and uh, ph physically reinstall to reverse direction uh, just change the ct1 direction from positive to negative and then save very simple and convenient to set Lastly, here are some tips for installation. First, as we introduced in the beginning, two CTs are required for microgrid system. However, this is not a strict requirement. You can also use one meter and one CT or use two meters. When using two meters, both of the two meters will use the same RS-485 pins on the hybrid inverter's meter CT port. And the two meters addresses should be different. Some clients may also wonder whether X3 hybrid G4 can also support microgrid function. And the answer is no. Due to hardware limitations, X3 hybrid G4 inverter cannot support microgrid. However, the hybrid parallel system can still work with microgrid function. In other words, maximum three X1 hybrid G4 can be parallel connected together and their EPS ports are also connected together. 
connect the angry inverter to the uniform EPS loads to let the microgrid system work for a parallel system. Last but not the least, to make uh, the angry inverter work for a microgrid system, the angry inverter should support AC coupling and uh, frequency increase response. Otherwise, it cannot be installed to the microgrid system. Okay, this is all I want to introduce to you today. Thank you all for listening and uh, hopefully you found the contents useful for your future installations. Uh, if you have any questions, you can kindly let us know. Uh, now let's check some of the questions.